All right, usually I, I really don't, you know, talk about one football game, but I think uh, today is worth talking about the Saints whooping on the Tampa Bay Bucks worse than they did week one. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about real football. You got guys like Jason Whitlock and idiots blaming Antonio Brown. And I'm going I'm to tell you who to blame for, for that reason and why not to put a lot of stock in the New Orleans Saints. But hit that subscribe button, bell icon like, button, share the video, check out the NFL playlist. And it's the blame is this, simple as this, personnel issue. You don't have the guys to protect Tom Brady. And then, too, it's a coaching issue. I'll get to the defense in a minute. When you know you don't, your five can't block four or five or six coming, simple as this. What you do is this. When you play a defense, an offense like the Saints and a defense like the Saints, you get in there, you run the football. If you don't want to run the football, which can lead to play action and, and, and opportunities downfield, what you do then is you allow Tom Brady to bring what he brought from New England. He didn't always have the greatest lines in New England, but you know what? They was able to draw offense where he hit the in three step drop. By the time he hit that, before he hit the third third step in that drop, the ball he knew he was going with the ball. Bruce Arians is a terrible coach. That's why Jameis didn't succeed, and that's why Tom didn't succeed last night. Simple as this: you can't if you don't have the best offensive line. You max protect. When you got receivers like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, and then you got a tight end like Rob Gronkowski, you max protect. You know, you can you can put seven linemen, two tight ends on the line, give you seven blockers, a running back, and two receivers out there, right? The reason you can do that is because, you know, you got some talented receivers. Then, if you max protect, you could run the ball behind the two tight ends. See, if of all you can do, you put two tight ends, and you can put a fullback in there. You still can run the ball. The beauty of, about that is you play action out of it. You can block, and you can release your guy like Rob Bronkowski. You can block, you can release your fullback. You can block, you can release your running back. So when you run the ball, they can make 8-9 in the box. You play action. You can have a running back go off for the route, and you got two receivers going off for the route. If it's not there, you max protect, so you shouldn't be getting hit. Then you have Rob Gronkowski release off a route so you can get some when you throw the ball away. Then, also, what you can do is you can spread that defense out. You can put five wides out there, and you can allow Tom Brady to throw short routes. The problem with Bruce Arians is he liked to go for the, for the gusto. He liked to go deep. He's sending all his receivers on deep routes, which... If I'm rushing forward and I got that offensive line, you got Cameron Hayward one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to beat Tristan Wirfs. He's a rookie. Now in this situation, even if you have a dominant left tackle, you got to have a really good offensive line. Then what you do is you got a guy like Cameron Hayward, you can chip him. You can send a back to chip him and go off for a route. Or you can send a back and double him. But Bruce Arians want to send everybody out for a route and throw it down the field. All he had to do was Tom Brady got here and say, what did you like you did from New England? Those short routes were killer with Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin and Gronkowski and Ronald Jones out the back and even Leonard Fournette. You can leave Mike Evans to be a guy to stretch the field. Cool. Underneath, you do those little those little rub routes, those little slants and little quick drags and crossing routes. They'll be all right. Bruce Arians is the number one reason this team ain't succeeding. He don't he all he know is get down the field and go vertical. Call some screens with Leonard Fournette, call some screens with, with Gronkowski with Ronald Jones the third, receiver screens to Antonio Brown. They was trying to go deep, and they don't have the protection to go deep. Bruce Arians don't believe in running the ball. He's he's a this is what Bruce Arians is. He's a low budget, he's a poor man's Andy Reid. The reason Andy Reid succeeded in Kansas City and not Philadelphia was simple. He had better skill position players in Kansas City. Now, I won't say he got a better quarterback, but we can see it's a better quarterback, but it wasn't Donovan's fault. He throwing the James Thrash, Todd Pinkerton, Chad Hall. I remember that team. Freddie Mitchell was the people's champ. He finally got T.O. when he went to the Super Bowl. So, in Philly, they never surrounded McNabb with the weapons. 
And the same thing with uh with Aaron Rodgers. The one year he had Greg Jennings, Jordy Nelson, he had some solid weapons. He won, he went to the Super Bowl and won it. Simple as that. What people gotta understand with the Tampa Bay Bucks is this. What you gotta understand with the Cleveland Browns is this, and shout out to Baker Mayfield, he got the COVID, so hopefully he'll be alright. The game is won in the trenches. It's not Madden. If you don't have a good five up front, and that don't mean you got to go out there with Larry Allen and and um, Chad Hutchinson, and uh, hopefully I said his name right, and and, and Alex Mack is your center, and or or you know Tyron Smith, Jason Peters type of offensive of, the offensive of line. You got to have an offensive of line who work good together, who will understand blocking schemes, who understand center that understand audibles. A quarterback to understand one to slide the line to. If you don't win in the trenches, on both sides of the ball, you won't you won't win the Super Bowl. And what's wrong with Cleveland and, and, and Tampa? They don't win in the trenches. The reason Cleveland to get by when Nick Chubbs get back, or if he ever come back with Kareem Hunt, they understand that if we hand the ball off, we go win. And Bruce Aarons don't understand that. Hand the ball off to Ronald. Hand the ball off to Leonard Fournette. Play action off of that if you want to go deep. He has to learn how to throw the short. He got to let Tom Brady go to short shit. It's not because Tom Brady can't go deep. It's that you don't have a five up front to block. He got to learn to max protect. He got to learn to play with a fullback. Bruce Arians is single-handedly holding his team back. If I'm them, I fire Arians, I hire McDaniels next year. Simple as that. Because McDaniels is going to know how to get it working with Tom Brady. He going to know where to get those little the stop and delay routes. The Saints beat them because they won the battle at the, the, uh, the trenches. Offensive line, defensive line, you know. And also, you talk about the Tampa Bay defense. Ty Bowles played a lot of zone last night. A lot of zone. And if you play zone, they're going to find Michael Thomas in the slot. If you don't, if you bust covers, they're going to find uh, Trey Kwan Smith open. Your best bet when you play Drew Brees. Excuse me. Your best bet when you play Drew Brees. You better disguise. And you better you better man up. You better throw you better throw some pressure up the middle. You better come off the edge. You better be aggressive when you play Drew Brees. Look here. Kyle Bowles should have played Drew Brees like he played Aaron Rodgers. Now, dude, the Saints got a better offensive line. A absolutely. But when you pressure an older quarterback, a shorter quarterback up the middle. You know, he 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 ain't gonna be as effective. He had all day to throw. Ty Bowles called a shitty game plan yesterday. It's okay, we all have off games. You gotta go out there, use Levante David, use Devin Smith Speed, use Shaq Barrett, Jason Peters, Jason Pierre Paul, and the Dominican Sue and William Ghostin. Gotta let them boys get upfield. Have your corners jamming at the jamming at jamming at the line and, and you brat you double you double Michael Thomas and you send a blitz. And then sometimes you like you going the same formation you blitz like you about to come, drop out of it. Tampa Bay just got all coached last night. Sean Payton is the premier offense of mine, only offense of mine I think in football that's better, that's probably better than him is Andy Reid, and that's because Andy Reid been doing it for a long time. You know, Andy Reid got the talent and a quarterback in Kansas City. I believe he had the quarterback with Donovan McNabb, just didn't have the weapons. Now. He, him and him and Eric Benenemy is just phenomenal at scheming stuff up. I think Sean Payton is behind him and behind Sean Payton. It's uh, it's Josh McDaniels. I think them three is the premier, the premier guys. Every year they're able to reinvent. But Bruce Aarons the problem here. He ain't going He not going He not going to change his offense for nothing. If his offensive line is shitty, it's gonna be the same five or seven step drop and going down the field. If it's you know. If he, he he just don't he a bad coach, and if they don't win it this year, it's because of two reasons: the D the uh, offensive line was terrible, which it was in the past years, and Bruce Aarons. Bruce Aarons is the number one issue. If I know my O line ain't good, then I'm putting Cameron Bray, Rob Gronkowski out there to block. I'm coming out there with a with, I'm either putting a fullback and a running back back there, and I'm coming out with one receiver, no fullback, two receivers, and that's all they got to do. Quick screens. You could just do, bring what Tom did from New England over there, but he didn't do it. And I, for, I forget who it was. It was a 
commentator who brought it up and said, you could tell Bruce Arians didn't even sit down and see what Tom Brady like. He's an idiot. He's arrogant. He think he's better than what he is. And if I'm Tampa Bay, I'm probably going to get Josh McDaniels next year if Tom chooses to stay. Simple as that. I'm getting McDaniels. But you got to give credit to the Saints. Um, they out-schemed them. They out-coached them. And when Michael Thomas back, you know, you'll be looking like, ooh, you know, they, they seem to come out the NFC. But what you don't understand about the Saints is they are career choke artists. Simple as that. When they make the playoffs, they choke. Even when they play Peyton Man in the Super Bowl, if it weren't for Tracy Porter making that pick, Peyton Manning would have had three rings if you add them all up. So when they get to the Super Bowl, when they get to the playoffs, they lose to Kirk Cousins, Case Keenum. Over the years, Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees have been terrible through the playoffs, but all these commentators and fans gobble them down. It's kind of like James Harden. And you look at James Harden and you be like, phenomenal player in the regular season, right? And shout out to my boy Gemini Hoops on Twitter. Phenomenal player. We talked about this earlier. But when it comes to winning time, how can I say he's the most skilled player? Because if you don't win when it's time to win, when it's win and go home, you don't play, you can't be one of the most skilled players in the league. How are you better than Isaiah Thomas? And when it comes to winning, that's what he did. College, he won a national champion. Probably in high school, he won a state championship. And obviously, as a professional, he's the only player in the 80s, in the 90s, who got a championship in the Bird, the Magic era, and the Jordan era. You know, you look at other guys that, that, that performed a big game. Tim Duncan. Um, and he was very skilled on the block. Kevin Garnett, very skilled. Um, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Kevin Durant did it when it counted. Um, even Kyrie Irving did it when it counted. He made a huge shot. So, you know, we look at Drew Brees, he reminded me of James Harden with a ring. You know, that one year. Other than that, him and Aaron Rodgers, look at it. Aaron Rodgers had a lead on Seattle, and he choked it up. And then one of my subs hit me up. Oh, you going to say the same thing about the Packers? <laughs> The thing about the, the Buccaneers is, excuse me, the thing about the Buccaneers is this. They got the talent, even without the premier offensive line. They don't have the coaching. When you look at Green Bay, they probably got the coaching. They just don't have the talent. They're they not good at stopping the run. They're okay against the pass. But offensively, Aaron Rodgers just don't have the help. All you got to do is shut down Devontae Adams. That's it. I'm not worried about Scantley or, or, or anybody else out there. Maybe Aaron Jones coming out the backfield. And that's the difference between Green Bay. You take away Devontae Adams and his offensive line ain't good as it has been way in the past. So, yeah, I'm going to say the same thing. Green Bay just don't have – Aaron Rodgers don't have the talent around him. Tom Brady just don't have the coaching around him. That's the difference. You put Tom, you put Aaron Rodgers in the Bucks. probably in his prime, his mobility would be good. Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson. You know, Russell Wilson ain't never had an offensive line. That's a fact. He ain't never had no whole line. But his mobility allows him to do good. Drew Brees and Tom Brady pocket awareness allows him to, to manipulate the pocket and do good. And right now, Drew Brees, is he, he got the short routes. He got the deep routes. And right now, Tom Brady and Bruce Arians, they just got the nine and the skinny posts. They got the, they got the routes that they don't have an offensive line to block five on four. And that sounds stupid, five on four, when you can chip and bring a six guy. It's just that Bruce Arians is a dumb coach. He don't know how to make adjustments. He's an old man stuck in his ways. If they were smart, they'd fire him next, after the season, after they lose. And it's a wrap, but New Orleans, New Orleans ain't a lock to win. And people talk about uh, the, the Packers. Can, what, did you just see what the Bucs did to the Packers and what the Saints did to the Bucs? The Packers don't. The Packers ain't, ain't shit. When you look at the, te the teams that's probably going to come out the NFC, you look at the Saints, people say them, but they choke in the playoffs every year. You look at the Packers, they ain't got enough talent around Aaron Rodgers. You look at the Bucks, they ain't got enough coaching. Uh, they coach and suck, at least on the offensive side. You look at NFC East, but you look at the NFC the West, Seattle ain't got the defense. <laughs> you also look at Arizona, they lost Chandler Jones, so they ain't got the pass rush, and their defense looking terrible. And I think they're a year before their time. So really, anybody can come out the NFC. Even somebody from the NFC East. The AFC is where the Lions, Bears, and Tigers are mine. And I ain't talking about the Bears in the NFC North. The Steelers, they struggled with the Cowboys. I think I was overlooking them. Good good, good coaching, good everything. Defense, everything. I think they should have signed Cam Newton. 
That's assurance to Ben 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 Roethlisberger. He's just stupid. The Baltimore Ravens, they just don't have enough skill positions, uh, skill positions around Lamar Jackson. It ain't his fault. They're gonna blame him. The Titans, they got better with Desmond King coming to uh, play the nickel. Um, they look good last yesterday beating the Bears. They overlooked the Bear. Uh, they overlooked the Bengals. They they can make a run. You know, Derrick Henry ain't running at a premium now, but that's just because team stacking the box and Tannehill beat them yesterday. He didn't beat them last week. Well, was we worse the Bengals? And that's the team. The Dolphins. I think it's a year a year ahead of their time, but they got a they got a premier defense. They got running backs. I mean, they got court. They got receivers. They just ain't got a running back. So next thing for them is to get a running back. Year before their time, the Buffalo Bills defense not good enough. Josh Allen he bounced back yesterday. You look at the the Steelers. I mean, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's it right there. The Chiefs and the Steelers and the Titans are probably the three teams minus injuries coming. That's probably gonna be able to haul last and probably gonna win the Super Bowl. Whoever come out the AFC gonna win it. Defenses is too good, or the offense is too good with Patrick Mahomes. Now, if you ask me who do I have as a dark horse in East Conference, to be honest, I want to say the Raiders. The Raiders could be a dark horse. Car playing well. Um, they just When they lose, they just ain't been healthy. It's been Josh Jacobs, Waller being injured. That's it. But when they're healthy, I think the Raiders could beat anybody on any given Sunday. I like... Uh, I like the high car plan. I think Henry Ruggs, and if they're able to get Henry Ruggs on the way they play with Nelson Aguilar receiver, that's a team that probably should have traded for Julio. But they could be a dark horse. In the AFC, I'm probably going to say, I'm probably, I'm probably going to go ahead and the team I didn't mention that might get in there. I'm probably, I'm probably going to say, The Bears, I think the Bears would probably be sneaky. They just got to find a way to stop the run. If the Bears stop the run and find some, enough quarterback, play, they can be sneaky. But in my opinion, check out my NFL playlist out. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You reach out if you have a business question, inquire, response, or read request. All my social media links there. I'm going to advertise on the channel. The link there. want to make a donation to the channel. Cash app CJ Good 313 PayPal link in the description. All those links there. Don't forget we got a Facebook group link. You check that out. Appreciate the love and support. We gone. All right, some may not know, but we got blocked from going live because we had some of the fight playing in the background this past Saturday on the tank in uh, Leo Santa Cruz Carter. It was or is it either the or New York fight on ESPN Plus, but um, it was a mistake. But now we can't go live until something change, uh, let something change until January 29th, basically February. So I want you guys to follow me on Sportscasters S P O R T S C A S T R, and I'll put the link in. The, well, I put the link in the description. That'll be the first link. Or you can follow me on Goodfellas Sports TV 2.0. Um, and I'll be doing my live streams both there at the same time. So any live football, basketball, you know, anything in between that, make sure you ch check out Sportscaster for your boy. Check it out. Um, I'll put that little uh, thumbnail or the little thing on the screen, but the link will be in the description. It monetized from day one. It's a YouTube alternative, so I will be there permanently. So I might be going live there and YouTube if I get my channel back or my live stream back at the same time. Appreciate everybody, but... Goodfellas Sports TV 2.0, link in the description, and Sportcaster, link in the description. If you want to press the link, it is on sportscaster.com. It's just Goodfellas Sports. One word. Appreciate it. We gone.